So this is kind of a new concept you've probably never heard before. You might not ever hear it again. I don't know. Maybe you will. They kind of talked about it in the movies, but it's but every time they do something in the movies, it's not really the real the real deal. It's just a a, a foreshadow of what's really happening, or a, a type and a shadow. It's a type of really the real deal. It's like time traveling movies. They're just types and shadows of the real deal, which we're all dropped down in time in the, in the old Adam. In in Eve drops us down into the cycle repeat, and so here's the deal. I realized today that, and I've realized it in the past, but I just didn't put all the puzzle pieces together. I realized when I was a kid, I was, I was like a watcher. I was watching all the insanity around me. And it could have been because of disassociative disorder, get, trying to disassociate from the abuse and the insanity. But then I'd go to the mall when I got became a teenager or whatever, and I would go by myself, and I was, just, I was like a watcher, just watching everything going on around me. like... This is crazy, all these people walking around. I really wasn't a participant, right? I was just a watcher. I had to function down here. And then when I went to college, I was actually watching all the drama in college. In high school, I was like a watcher, watching everything that was going on. I always wanted to just kind of be by myself and just observe take a job after college it, during college I did part-time jobs you would just you try to learn how each system so I've had a lot of jobs in my lifetime I probably had 120 jobs my whole lifetime because I've always worked two jobs or three jobs and so as I set as I changed jobs changed companies changed managers changed co-workers I started to see a pattern that they're all pretty much the same their accounting's the same, their shipping department's the same, it's all the same stuff. So I started to see the fractal even in companies and personalities. And so I guess I became a watcher just by default. It's just my calling in life. And then when I went on YouTube, I started watching the drama and the comments on YouTube and the insanity. I would sit in church, and I, when I first joined the church, I would watch, and I was just watching, you know, the craziness. And it was just drama, all the time drama. No matter where you went, you would sit back. It was like watching a Jerry Springer show, you know, but you're actually in it. You're sitting there, and the, it's like being in the audience watching a Jerry Springer show. So I'd be sitting in the church or sitting going to a job or sitting in a home with somebody married to somebody or family or whatever and I would just watch them going about their little AI program they are participants and I was just sitting there observing and I realize now that's what I am that's what I'm doing now I'm just observing I'm decoding I'm observing this situation when you hit source code what else is there? Why do I want to participate in Babylon? Why do I want to participate in uh, the repeat? Why do I want to participate in time? I don't. Time is a repeat. Every day, every moment is the same. And so to, to conclude that video I did yesterday, or audio video to combine, to do that, conclude what I talked about yesterday, the reason people don't want to see the repeat is because they're going to have to change themselves. They won't be able to blame other people. They're going to have to look in the mirror, and most people are not ready. So they participate in the drama. They want to project other stuff onto somebody else. And so when you step out of the game, you step out of being a participant, you become a watcher. And you can see patterns, you can see uh, repeats, you can see uh, a lot of stuff you can learn. But the only way to step out is to be introspective. There's a lot of people that claim to be watchers or non-participants. Because you got the non-player characters that just participate, don't even know what they're doing. They're just following some kind of tradition or some kind of bloodline or some kind of whatever. They don't think for themselves. They just follow some kind of program. And so when you, when you really want to be a watcher and just sit back and observe, kind of like a, a guru, and you're just sitting back watching, but I, I don't even like the word guru, but that's the only word I can come up with to explain what I'm saying. So you're sitting back. Yeah, there's times you have to participate. you got to pay your bills. you got to go to work. you got to 
but you can be a watcher while you're doing those things. Even in a conversation, you don't even have to participate in the conversation the way the other person wants you to participate because you already know there's their mind is in a program and they can't think outside that box because you hit source code. So my point is, you can see past the source. I mean, you can see past the game to source and that source code, you already know what they're thinking because they're following some kind of denomination box. They're some kind of culture box, some kind of ideology box or whatever. Yeah, there's certain things that are right and wrong. We know that. We know that. But that's not a box. That's just love. You know, love your neighbors yourself. And so if you love your neighbors yourself, there's just certain things you're not going to do. You know? There's some people in the gossip box. There's some people in a, in a, in, in a hypocrisy box. The very thing that they point their finger at they're doing you know one thing i noticed with these actors i followed about three to five actors on their twitter and i watched their movies and what i found out in the in the with the actors now this is this is but this is wild stuff people i mean wild this is wild what i'm getting ready to say is so wild and you can try it test it watch an actor's twitter feed Watch their movies. The very movie that they're acting in is how is trying to wake them up to the life that they're living. They're actually playing roles in the movies that parallel their life. But the sad part is they're not introspective. So back to what I was saying. The introspection, the reason you're in this game, the reason you're in this repeat, the reason you're in this drama is to teach you to be introspective. Is to teach you to be introspective. Those who never escape are, don't have the ability to be introspective. It's kind of like a dissociative, dissociative order, but you have to have the Holy Spirit to, to look, to be in a box and to look at the box from the outside in. It takes introspection and it takes the Holy Spirit. But most people cannot even observe their self, much less be introspective of their thoughts and their emotions and their, their worldview and their insanity and their hypocrisy and their sin. and their, They can't do it. And the reason they can't do it, and if you've been married to one, you know what I'm talking about. The reason they can't do it is because of insecurities or because they, they're holding on to some kind of blue linus blanket some kind of security blanket that if they let that if they let that false image go they would destroy themselves they would have to go jump off a bridge somewhere long story short the only way you're going to be a true watcher in the game is realize it's a game and sometimes see the the, the goal is to set yourself up to where you don't have to play the game now, it's hard to get there, and it's a long process because you got Jezebels around you, you got Delilahs around you, you got legalists around you, you got a lot of people playing the game to support the game. And when you start to see through it, whether it's on a job or whatever, you might have to do two part time jobs to escape it, because, or you might have to. Uh, create your own business to escape it but when you once you see the game for what it is and you decide to escape it it's a long it's a lifelong process it seems like and then health stuff hits you and all that that's why i say you need to become your own doctor you need to become your own psychologist you need to become your own uh guru for yourself but you, but under god through jesus jesus is the prophet, priest, and king of this whole thing. And so you need to go to him and follow after him and become your own prophet, priest, and king in him, in Christ. In him we live and breathe and have our being. Because nobody else is going to help you. They're going to, if, if you go to somebody else, I don't care who it is, if you go to the New Age, if you go to the Wiccans, if you go to a Baptist, you go to a Methodist, they're going to give you the box. And the box don't apply to you. It applies to them. So what are they trying to do? They're trying to pull you into their box. They're trying to make a copy 
of themselves. So when you disassociate, disconnect from Babylon, from the system, you're going to have to hit source code. Otherwise, you're going to go into another box and another box and another box. And you're going to run. And I, uh, I dated and married this woman. She said, she said, one time she opened up and said, she says, I'm like a rat. I feel like a rat. I'm running to this. I ran. To, this is when I dated her. I ran to this man and I ran to this man and I ran to this. She was actually telling me what she was going to do before she did it. I don't know why I married her. She opened up and said, I ran to this man and I ran to this man and I ran to this man. And she was running from man to man trying to escape the, uh, the hamster wheel or whatever she was running from. She was actually telling me what she was going to do before she did it. I don't know why I married her because it was so obvious. And uh, sure enough, she did the very thing. To you. She followed the same pattern that she was following before. And so my point is, the repeat is designed to force you to wake up and be introspective. But if you don't want to see the repeat, it's because you don't want to be introspective and you want to blame other people for your junk. And you don't you want other people to be responsible and you want to be a narcissist or a, or a codependent or something. You don't want to face the truth. Because when you face the truth, it destroys all those fake identities and you have to go to Jesus and get your identity 100% in Jesus. That's what's happening. And so... When you have an existential awakening, you realize this whole thing is just a bunch of little boxes designed to pull you into some kind, somebody else's cult or ism. And the magician priest class, these are the fake reality agents. They rise, the ones who are the biggest fakers rise up in the system the most. And these actors who play their role in their script, they're fakers. And so the reason they're good actors is because they're actors in they're good actors in their real life, and they're just fake. And so, I watched some of them. I watched them. The very roles that they're playing is to wake them to try to show you, hey, you're a witch, you're a narcissist. You shot somebody because you're shooting char you're shooting people's character on Saturday Night Live. The very thing that they're doing in the in their scripts, they actually end up doing in the real world. It actually plays out, and they can't even see it. And if it's doing it, if it's in the actors, it's in your world too. It's everybody. And so the only way to escape the script is become a watcher and be aware of your inner man and get out of it before you destroy yourself and run to Jesus. And look at everything from an eternal perspective. Set your affections above and not below. Because otherwise, you're going to be playing the game. Over. You're going to keep doing the repeat every day.